Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Life is a Story We Tell Ourselves. This episode will explore how we humans continue to struggle to find spirit, purpose, and meaning in our lives, which can lead to a healthy physical as well as healthy spiritual life. Here to help us with this quest is Toby Black. Toby comes from Yoruba land in Nigeria. She's an initiated Ifa, an Oshun priestess, a yogi, and certified yoga teacher. She works as a priestess, healer, and holistic health guide. She believes that living a true spiritual life can bring about health and wellness, which in turn brings peace and happiness. Welcome to the program, Toby. Thank you for having me, Don. Yeah, it's great to, to have you, especially since our, our meeting was serendipitous on the coast of, of Ecuador, a beautiful part of Ecuador, um, if I might uh, say so. And I was contemplating a conversation about spirit, purpose and meaning and health and wellness uh, for some time. So our meeting uh, was very timeless, uh, timeless. <laughs> Maybe it is timeless. Uh, was yeah. very, <laughs> was very, I hope it will be timeless. Our meeting was very timely and I'm, I'm really happy to have you on the program. So welcome, Toby. Uh, let's get Thank right you. into it. And um, I have a question that's been burning on me for some time after meeting you and that's, uh, what started you on your personal journey of health, wellness, and, and spirituality? Thank you for asking that question. Um, I have always been on a spiritual journey and um, health journey from a very young age. However, I became more heightened in my life when at the time I was going through some challenging times. I was going through a divorce and I was living in a city that I loved and I'd done my degree and I had a job. And honestly, everything that I thought I needed to be happy, I had at the time. And I just did not feel peaceful, comfortable, and I really didn't connect to my true self. And at that point, I was contemplating the meaning of everything. What is the meaning of my life? What is my purpose? And also I was in search of health because I was deeply unhappy and I wasn't peaceful. So that kind of got me started on the journey of consciously going on the path of spirituality. So I understand that uh, perfectly. I know many of us uh, have things that happen in, in our lives that suddenly cause us to question the meaning uh, of life. So after you, you did that questioning and it sort of started you off on this path of uh, a spiritual quest, if I can put it that way, uh, how did you get started? What, what did you do? I mean, I understand that uh, you are an Ifa and Oshun priestess. Uh, what is that? How did you get involved in that? And how has that helped you on your spiritual journey? Well, that part actually came a little bit later, but at the time when I started the spiritual journey, I left London and went to India and um, started a yoga program to become a certified yoga teacher. And I also went on meditation programs to really just connect to myself because I felt like I wasn't living in my true self. I felt like I didn't really understand the meaning of my life and that the health issues I had, I was in control of it. I could actually heal myself if I started to make conscious decisions. And so I went to India and I did my yoga teacher training and I did meditation and that began to wake me up to a different um, dimension to the one I had been on all my life, I started to really look into myself and see myself. And at the time I have to say, and even sometimes today, some of it isn't pretty, but I needed to see that. And that for me was like one of the most profound moments on my spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned meditation, which often has a lot to do with looking into yourself and not seeing something uh, that's pretty. Uh, what was that, that like for you uh, personally? Uh, how did meditation help you uh, see yourself, a self that you thought was not so pretty, and then to come out of the other end feeling perhaps happier and healthier and more centered? Oh, well, uh, that was really, it was challenging. And 
um, especially with a lot of people having this image that meditation is this thing where you have a pretty image of yourself or it gives you a magical solution to life. For me, that was in the experience. I saw some of the ways and some of the things that happened in my life that were really challenging and difficult for me to understand. And also as part of that process, I connected to what I call a higher version of myself where I could be compassionate and be loving to the one who was going through all of the issues I was going through at the time, the one that was going through divorce, the one that had some health issues, the one that was looking for peace, the one that was looking for meaning. And I have to say, I am really grateful to the teachers that taught me meditation and started me on that path because it has really helped me not just to see what I call the pretty version of me, but all of me. And this is what I call a true spiritual journey is to be able to see every part of who we are and to accept it and do whatever we need to do to change some of it. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it we just have to accept as that is what our nature is. And some of it we can change by taking conscious actions and doing what we need to do to become the version of ourselves that we aspire to be. Right. So you mentioned you finally got in touch with your, I think you said higher self, uh, a self that could look back more objectively, if I can use that word, at uh, the person who was going through the struggles. And so you got in touch with a more um, higher self, if, I can put it that way, that could see objectively and understand what that other you, that other part of yourself that that you were going through. And then through that objectivity and that awareness, uh, you got to a higher level of understanding how to deal with those problems and how how you could actually heal yourself. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. I understand. So, so how long have you been on this journey? Uh, when did it begin and, and where are you on the journey now? Well, I believe uh, a true spiritual path is a lifelong journey. Uh, and also before we came to this incarnation um, and after this, after the body dies, we continue on the spiritual path. But for me, all of that um, process from India to where I am now, where a few years, um, last year I became an initiated Ifa and Oshun priestess in my tradition. And all the learnings that I have learned on my journey to help other people to be able to heal themselves because not only did meditation and doing yoga and choosing to eat healthy and also to surround myself with healthy things, um, helped to change my life. I also began to find the meaning of sharing this with people. And so teaching yoga, teaching about spirituality and talking about spirituality and working as an ocean priestess, working with the spirit of nature to bring about it. Because part of the process for me was to awaken to something bigger than me, to what some people might call God, the universe, the divine, to the spirits of nature, to know that a lot of the things are outside of my control, but working with the divine, working with spirit, I can bring about certain realities to my existence to help me live a more meaningful, loving, compassionate, and peaceful life. So where I am on the journey, still learning, teaching, healing, and sharing some of the things that I know with people in a very authentic way and to help people to find their own tools because Sometimes what I know is not what somebody needs, but I can act as a mirror for somebody to find their own tools and their own ways to bring about health, meaning and purpose and love in their life. Mm, understand. So what, can I ask you, what exactly is a Ifa and Oshun priestess? How do you get to be a priestess and, and what, what tradition is that in? So um, in Nigeria, in Yoruba and where I come from, Ifa is what we call a, a traditional way or traditional belief system. And there's also what we call Isheshe, 
Isheshe is the traditional ways of our ancestors. That is like a complete mandala of spirituality, of healing, of astrology, of cosmology, of medicine, traditional medicines. It's really, it's a way of living that our ancestral traditional people followed. And Ifa is a way to communicate with the divine. So Ifa priests and Ifa priestesses usually are born into the way of living, the traditional Yoruba family that practice this way of living. Because some traditional pe people in Yoruba land in Nigeria don't practice this way of living. But the traditional people that do, they are born into this way of living. And the train from when their children from about three, four, five, the priests and the priestesses are trained and learn from their parents, from their masters, from other priests. And then when they become adults, they become initiated. And that's a process that lasts from between three to seven to 11 days, depending on the lineage of the house that one is following. And the initiation is sacred, but that brings about some spiritual awareness and power and certain things to be able to work as an Ifa priest. There's also the training, there's the skills and learning. So it's a lifelong journey of training to be an Ifa priest or Ifa priestess. And those that are not born into it can go back and learn it and become initiated and practice and help people on that journey. And so Isheshe, being an Oshun priestess, Oshun is the, is the spirit of water, also requires an initiation in, well, it can be in Nigeria. There, Isheshe, Ifan Isheshe now is practiced in Cuba, in America, in Haiti, as Santeria, Candoble, which is like a different version to the Ifan Isheshe from Nigeria. Um, as an initiated or shun priestess, I help people to heal emotional, spiritual problems, sometimes physical problems by working with spirits. And so that's part of my journey requires a lot of training, a lot of dedication, daily rituals and learning from different teachers to be able to help other people and to work with spirits. So different traditions have different ways of, of approaching this. And I think of, you know, the Catholics who have confession, uh, other traditions have other ways of somehow healing themselves spiritually, unburdening themselves, uh, making a transition from perhaps emotional pain that they may be going through. Uh, can you explain to us or maybe communicate um, how you get a person to work with spirit um, in order to overcome maybe some of the most common problems that human beings have today, like depression or anger or resentment or those kind of things. If a person comes to you, what are some of the first things you do to, to work with them spiritually? Well, working as an Ifra priest or priestess, we have a tool that we call Okpele that the priest or priest that uses to communicate with Olodumare, which is God. So if I, we call the voice, the esoteric voice of Olodumare, I listen to the person's problem or priest or priestess will listen to the person's problem and use the tool, the Okpele, to communicate with Olodumare and we receive a certain answer, which we call the Odu. So there is 256 Odus in the Ifa tradition. These Odus are specific energetic patterns of how everything came to be in the universe. So when we communicate with Olodumare through the Okwele, Ifa priests and priestesses, communicating the client's problem, a uh, message is received from one of the Odus revealing the answer to the client's problem. So this answer comes from spirit, showing us what we need to do in order to go about solving the client's problem. And some of this might be making offerings to spirits, to the ancestors, doing prayers. Some of it might be using traditional medicines, which are sometimes called akoshe, and several many other different things can be done. So um, this is as much as I can explain about that process. Yeah, I understand. So can you share an experience that you had 
that you would describe as uh, perhaps deeply spiritual, something that happened to you personally that either changed your life or that was uh, a tremendous spiritual meaning to you? Uh, well, I would say meditation um, journeys have really helped me to um, connect more with my spiritual um, path. And I've had many spiritual experiences. But there was a time when I really was struggling with my health. And I went into a meditation and I could just really connect to myself from this place of compassion and really seeing the one that was going through everything that was going through and also seeing where I could find the answers to the problem that I had at the time because I was diagnosed with a chronic condition called Hashimoto. And at the time I was really struggling with my body, with my mind. It felt like everything was failing me, my body. I couldn't get out of bed. And I was praying and through prayers and meditation, I was able to start connecting to the things that I needed to heal myself because the doctors had told me that it was a, it was a lifelong condition and I was going to be taking medication for the rest of my life. And to me, that just did not resonate. So I went into my spiritual practice, went into my spirit, which is the true self, because for me, a true spiritual experience is connecting with your true self not the self that you've been told that you are or the self that you put onto people or the self that you think you need to be, but just your true self and seeing things as they really are, not as we want them to be. So during this part, I was able to truly connect with myself and connect with some of the things I needed. And that really helped me and changed my life and it made my commitment to the spiritual part even more so because in a year I was able to heal the diagnosis I was told I would have for the rest of my life and I don't have that anymore just by being able to follow and listen to my true self not what everyone else was telling me. So when you connected with your true self in in this meditative experience was there something specific that you saw about yourself or something you did or something you changed or an event that happened uh, in the process, or what was the process that led to the healing? Well, for me, a spiritual experience is quite mystical, and it's it's always a little bit difficult to explain it. However, it was much more to that I was beginning to connect with my heart, with my soul, and with the things that were meaningful in my life. And it took, it took a while and it took commitment and daily practices and prayers to be able to, and also a lot of trust and faith to actually know that everything that was going on in my life, I had the power and the choice to be able to make the decisions that I needed for myself. And so when I was connecting in the spiritual states, I was able to listen listen to the voice within me that kept telling me that this was the path for me this is what I needed to do and in my waking state I was able to just navigate and find people that helped me on the journey and I'm truly grateful to all these people to become it all in the way that I chose because I believe that by working with natural medicines which I've worked with for a few number of years now working with natural medicines, I would be able to reverse or regress the condition and become healthy again. And that's what happened. So I was following my spiritual experience connected me to that part of me that knows what I needed to be able to heal myself. Hmm. So I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah. No, it, it does. I, I understand completely. I mean, what you're saying is that it was revealed to your real self, what you needed to do. You could see because you were in a state of objectivity and you knew the path that you had to take or which led to which medicines, which healing practices you needed to take. You could, your eyes were opened uh, to some degree is what you're saying, is that right? Yes, I mean, it's not that straightforward like you get uh, do A, B, C, D. Um, it's much more like you, 
it's point is an awareness and feeling and knowing that this is really true for me and experiencing it in a waking state of, I know this, I am sure of this. Hmm. I understand you know this, you're sure of it. Uh, you understand you come to a, a point of, of knowing, of spiritual knowing, which is a kind of higher knowing. Um, and you are compelled to go along that path and that's what uh, led ultimately to your healing. Yes. I understand. That's, in its own way, that's extremely beautiful. Uh, so how do you believe uh, health, especially physical health and mental health, are, are tied to spiritual growth? Can you have one without the other? Are they connected? And if they're connected, how are they connected? For me, I speak from a personal experience. And for me, my physical health, my mental health, you know, emotional health, all of this I call holistic health. Because when one of this, if we separate them in that way, is out of balance, then we're unhealthy. We can't be mentally unwell and be well. We can't be physically unwell and be well. So for me, with a spiritual path, I have been able to connect to myself that knows how to care for myself, how to love myself, because some of the things that I was doing before that, thought, that I thought was self-care and self-love were actually self-abused, as I think now and I see now. And through my spiritual practices, I have been able to dedicate myself to looking after my own health, to actually practice physical health practices, whether running or doing yoga or doing some other sort of physical activities every day. And that only came about from being on a spiritual path and committing to a spiritual path, because in order to really be aware of the true self and to see the true self, one must be healthy. And health is about all of who we are, the emotional, the mental, the physical. And if one part of us is not healthy, then we cannot be holistically healthy. And for example, with meditation, meditation helps the mind to be healthy, to be clear. Physical practices help the body to be in a state of cleansing and removing toxins. Yoga really helps the body with different postures to remove toxins, to allow circulation in the body and so many health benefits. And breath work helps the emotion to release emotions that we don't need. And all of this, I find has become deeper and more meaningful through my spiritual practice. Before I committed to a spiritual way of living and spiritual practice, I would sometimes not look after my physical health. I would sometimes not look after my mental health. And I would be numbing when I was in situations where instead of going to look after myself, I would be numbing myself, for example, with alcohol because I was stressed. But the more that I committed to a daily practice, well, maybe not daily practice, but regular practice of looking after myself, of caring for myself, of loving myself, because these things I do as self-care and self-love, I have been able to see not just my health grow, but also my spiritual practice and my wellness. So for me, it all ties into each other. Without the spiritual part, it's much more difficult for me to or it was much more difficult for me to commit to looking after myself physically or mentally or emotionally. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to share this with other? I mean, you're a yogi, yoga instructor, uh, you teach uh, meditation, I believe, um, and you teach these practices that lead to, to health and wellness. Why did you decide to share these practices with others? Well, once because it really helped me. It was almost like a new world to me, a new world that I didn't even know existed before, a new world of, of caring for myself, a new world of some of the things I knew before, as I previously mentioned, as self-care and self-love were actually what I now call self-abuse because some of those things were not helping me. You know, For example, alcohol, I was drinking 
alcohol to numb certain things. You can enjoy alcohol and I don't have an issue with alcohol. It's just sometimes I found from my own experience, I was using it to numb stress. I was using it to numb things I didn't want to actually deal with. And so by going on this path and actually experiencing that I can heal myself, I can care for myself in a much healthy, loving, kinder way, it became apparent that I needed to share this with whoever needed it, because this is not for everyone. I needed to share it with whoever needed it. So I started to teach it. I started to share it. And for me, the key is about finding the tools that helps us to live authentically, healthily, to live a life of meaning and purpose. Sometimes when I work with people on holistic health guides, Sometimes it's not the tools that I have that they need. It could be some other tools. So really for me, it's to help people to live a healthy, more meaningful, peaceful life. And that was uh, a natural decision from seeing the benefit and experiencing the benefit and leaving the benefit to begin to share this with people. I understand. Um, I really do. You know, we've talked about meditation uh, several times here and I think as we were talking earlier, before the program started, I was mentioning how there's been such a proliferation of meditation techniques, advertising about meditation, social media. There are all sort of apps you can put on your smartphone uh, about meditation. You hear all sorts of promises made about meditation, relaxing you, bringing you peace, uh, giving you a sense of bliss. uh, And it sounds all wonderful. Um, I just want your opinion on that. What do you think about that? I mean, me as a, I mean, I've been practicing meditation almost all of my life. And I was telling you earlier, I find many of these claims, um, to some of them to be fantastical, uh, some of it to be wonderful that so many people are discovering meditation and understanding it as something that can help you, uh, along your spiritual journey and with your health. But I have to wonder about, uh, this proliferation of, all of these meditation uh, techniques and what seems to be the commercialization of meditation. Do you have any opinion on that? Yes. Um, First of all, I have to say um, the commercialization helps some people to become aware of these practices that they would never have been able to know or become aware of it. So that helps in that area. However, some of the claims that, as you said, I hear some of these companies making, is just absurd. It's a fallacy because from my own experience, meditation and mindfulness are separate. They are connected, but they are quite separate. And meditation doesn't bring you bliss. When you are bliss, your meditative practice will be bliss. Meditation doesn't just bring you peace. Meditation allows you to truly see everything that's going on. Sometimes when my life is busy and I go into a meditation, I see everything that's coming up in my mind and it's not blissful and it's not peaceful. I don't stop doing the meditation because the meditation is to help you to connect to your true self and whatever that is your true self in every moment is different. And so the, the commercialization of staying because not every, not every app, some of it are really good. I have to mention that. But some of them are just based on, on, on stories that are not true. And one thing that I want to mention here is that if the objective of this company's organization is to make money and not really to help people, then the stories and the claims they're going to make will be one of or meditation helps you with bliss and peace and all the, you know, what I call all the niceties of meditation. However, if it's truly to help people to discover a tool, because it is a tool that can help people to connect to themselves, that can help people to heal on many deep levels, that can help people to become aware of themselves and aware of the, the, the surrounding they are in, that can help people to become more compassionate and to see from a, from a different space to what you are used to saying, then um, meditation is it's this really powerful tool. So yes, I, I, I am very careful. I have to say I have 
made the mistake once in, in the past when I've said once or twice that med meditation helps you to bring peace. The more I go on my practice, the more that I see that meditation is a tool that allows you to see your true self and see who you are in moments, in that particular moment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, thank you for that. Um, you know, the other question that's a corollary to that has to do with the fact that there are thousands of religious practices and beliefs in the world and all of them promise to give people a sense of purpose and meaning to life. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, what do you teach that's uh, perhaps the diff different or the same uh, with respect to systems of belief uh, that are out there that, um, you know, give you all these promises about giving you meaning, purpose in, in life? And, and some of these practices conflict with each other, and some of them hate each other and fight each other and shed blood. Um, over their different belief systems. Um, perhaps, you know, when you have someone who comes to you that's a novice or doesn't even know anything about uh, religion or they've had a negative experience, how do you, you know, respond to the fact that there are all these religious practices out there and all these belief systems? I think the most important thing is meaning and purpose um, is very individualistic. It's a personal experience. And this is something I emphasize. I don't try to preach my way of living to people. My choice is the way that I've decided to live my life or the lens I've decided to live my life around because that is a personal choice. For me, as you said, all of these religions and traditions at the core of them, there is a fundamental truth that most of them connect to an higher power, which is what a spiritual, to some extent religious ways of living connects one to, to that honest of God or the divine or the universe or great mystery or great spirit, whatever um, people choose to call that, that energy. However, it's a personal choice. And for me, I encourage people to find their own connection, that, to find their own meaningful connection to what is it that is the greater energy, the greater power that helps us on our journey to have a meaningful, purposeful, useful, peaceful, happy life. You know, sometimes people already have a way of connecting to the divine. However, that way has been corrupted or because there's bloodshed or any of these things people find it difficult to connect in that way but the essence of a lot of these practices and ways of living and religion is still the core of the beauty of humanity of living a meaningful peaceful compassionate loving life and if we can connect to the essence then really whether we choose this way or that way so long as it has meaning for us and so long as we're not trying to tell everyone that is the only part that is true because that's where there is problem that's why people fight each other because everyone says my part is the true part and the thing is there is many parts to the same thing so long as the part I'm working makes sense to me so long as the part I'm working is meaningful for me so long as the part I'm working allows me to love and be compassionate to people not just working the same part as me or working other parts because what am I to say my part is the only true valid part and so when people come to work with me and they're trying to find meaning and purpose, I try to be a mirror for them to see themselves, to find their own path. If it's my path, then great, I can guide them on the path. If it's another path, then great, I can encourage them to keep finding that path for them that is true to them. Because at the end of the day, when they truly find that path for them, they would understand the beauty and the joy of being able to find your own path and allow other people to be on their own path because it makes the world interesting and beautiful. Yeah, I understand that. Well, I, I am compelled to, to remember uh, along those lines a, a story from the New Testament and in the Bible when Jesus' disciples got upset because they saw a group of other disciples and people that weren't part of their group uh, healing people spiritually and uh, preaching to them spiritually and bringing them spiritual understanding. And the disciples, Jesus' disciples got upset and said, what are those people doing over there? We gotta go over there and stop them. 
And Jesus basically said, calm down, guys. You know, if they're not for us or if they're not against us, then they're with us. Let them alone. They're doing God's work is basically um, what my paraphrase message is uh, from Jesus to his disciples. So indeed, there are um, other uh, paths or paths that people can be on leading to exactly uh, the same uh, thing. And, I, and Jesus certainly made that point to his disciples. Uh, it's a point that's lost upon a lot of uh, people in the uh, Christian tradition these days. I have a, another question that switches reels a little bit here that I was kind of fascinated about uh, your background uh, when I saw that you have a double master's degree in computer security and forensics, of all things. And here you are very much focused on um, healing, uh, wellness, spirit, purpose, and meaning. And I was wondering if there was any connection between your career, if it were in in computer security and forensics, forensics and and your journey, your spiritual journey. How did you get involved in computers? <laughs> well, um, with computer security, I was very fascinated at the time. Computing was becoming a, a growing industry, and wireless computing, laptops, and all of that. I was very fascinated in this new technology and new development. And I was studying computer science as my undergraduate degree in London. And I took a cryptography security model and I really enjoyed the secrecy of computer security that in order for you to, in order for you to secure a system, you have to understand the system. And Two, there was two sides to it. You can be working to secure the system by understanding and breaking into the system for companies or doing it what we call the white hacker way, or you can be a criminal and breaking into a system. And so all of that was very fascinating for me to learn and to actually break into a computer system to understand how to compromise um, security as something that is very interesting and involves a lot of secret and understanding the secret and breaking the secret. And, um, and that led me to do my first master's in computer security and the second master's in computer forensics. And um, I actually was thinking about this and began to see similarities in what I do now and what my part of computer security and forensics um, took me and that computer security is about breaking into, into a system to improve its security. Mm -hmm. And computer forensics is about finding out how somebody broke into the system to be able to further secure the system. And the way that I work with um, holistic health, I almost like break into myself with meditation, with spiritual practices, not just listening to what people have told me, but really connecting to myself and finding out what is my own truth? What is my own meaning? What does this actually hold for me? Do I actually connect to what is being said to me? Is this my truth or is this somebody else's truth? Does this make meaning within me? And sometimes when I am out balance, I can look in and go, where have I picked up an idea, an opinion that is not mine, that is shifting me out of balance? Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, in a world where we live, we live with other people and we pick up other people's ideas. You know, for example, some of the people that get brainwashed into certain religious cult or into taking certain actions that they shouldn't take. This is ideas that people share that are not true for those people, but have entered into this system and they begin to live this as their own truth. And in a way, for me, the connection comes to always looking at my ways of being, my ways of communicating, not just with myself, but with all of existence, not just with people, the plants and the, uh, and the trees and the animals. Is this meaningful? Is this my truth? Is this something that I've been passed on that doesn't serve me anymore? Is this something that is helping me? Because not everything that we've been passed on serves us at some point some things no longer serves us some some of the things that my parents passed me no longer serve me some of the things that 
some teachers or some friends that pass me no longer serves me. And I have to always, with security and forensic, always look into my system. Am I healthy? Am I secure? Do I need to remove some programmings that no longer serve me? And do I need to bring in new programming that are going to serve me and serve the people that I serve on my journey? So that's where I see the connection. That's that's beautiful. That's 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 wonderful. I mean, it just shows how uh, everything is is so connected. Well, we're almost to the end of the program, and I have one final question uh, for you. And it and in some ways, it's personal because I've been focused so much on my life in the last few years on our common humanity and wondering how or why. Maybe it's a question of why uh, people don't recognize our common humanity to the extent that they should. And what I mean by that in terms of bringing um, people together, understanding our collective uh, consciousness, our collective well-being, our collective health is all connected to our understanding that we are all human beings, that we're all into this, in this together. So I'm wondering through uh, your practices, uh, through the search for spirit, purpose, and meaning, uh, whether or not you believe that as individuals practice uh, meditation, practice health, uh, wellness, uh, and taking care of their, their body, mind, and, and soul, um, whether or not that will lead to humanity eventually coming to the point where they do recognize and appreciate our common humanity. Hmm. Thank you for that question. Yes, I do. You know, my aspirations and my my prayers and my hope is exactly what you've said in that at the moment in the collective unconscious, which is what a lot of people tap into, um, we are with spirituality and the growth of wellness and well-being. Um, we are going towards a collective consciousness where we begin to see that when I heal myself, when I'm able to look after myself, when I'm able to manage my own waste, I say manage my own waste in that we all produce waste. Sometimes some of this waste, we go dumping it on other people because of lack or ignorance of how to look after ourselves. And sometimes we go dumping this waste on the universe because of the lack of knowledge and knowing of how to look after ourselves. A lot of people, and from my own experience too, I didn't really know what it is to look after myself with love and with care when I was actually at the start of my spiritual journey, because to actually look after myself by doing that, not only do I look after myself, then I look after other people when I'm healthy, when I'm, when I'm in a right state of mind and I'm able to relate to people in a kind and more compassionate, more generous to see our commonality that we are all in this human journey and see the human condition as to that we all sometimes have you know, terrible times, go through so many different situations in life. But together, if we all have the tools or have some of the tools to be able to help us to look after ourselves mindfully and consciously, then we look after other people around us. Then we don't go dumping our waste on other people, dumping it on the universe. Now we take responsibility for our actions. A lot of people choose not to take responsibility for their actions. A lot of people, it is easier to numb the feelings, you know, because when you feel that if I do this, it's going to affect somebody negatively. When, if we can tap into that feeling, then we would not do those things. So what, what do most people do? They numb themselves and go, you know, I won't feel that way. So then I can go rip this person off or lie to them or steal from them. Because when you stop feeling, you can go and do so many things. But when we begin to look after ourselves, we not only look after our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health, all of our being, and we can see how our actions actually affect each other because we all live in the same universe, not just affect each human being, but also the trees, the water, the animals. And so we can begin to make more conscious decisions. Do I really need to be doing that? Do I really need to be sharing my energy that way? Can I use my energy in the way that 
not only serve me, but serves other people. And if we take responsibility this way and stop trying to give responsibility to other people, you know, to whoever we decide to give the responsibility to and actually go, we are responsible, not just for our happiness, our health, but by being responsible and making the right decision, we also indirectly make the right decision for our neighbors, for our family, for our friends. So yes, I do believe that if we keep going, now I have hope, some people have the, uh, the view of, oh, everything is going down. I have hope, I see a beautiful world. I see, even with all of the advertisement of um, yoga and uh, meditation, and some of them, yes, they're not pointing towards the, towards the true, towards the true uh, meaning. However, if people become more aware and begin to take some of these practices and then use some of these practices, because with these practices is that you experience the benefit. Nobody tells you. Once you begin to experience the benefit, you begin to cultivate the practices more. And once you begin to experience the benefit, you can share it with people that are willing to experience it too. And so with one of us, few of us sharing all of these tools that help us to become healthy, then we, you know, the future is looking bright. Right. Well, Olu Watobo Biloba Black, Thank you. Initiated Ifa and Oshun Priestess, a yogi and certified yoga teacher. We have enjoyed talking to you this afternoon. I really appreciate you joining us on Life is a Story We Tell Ourselves, and I hope you'll come back and talk about your journey with us in the future. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Dan. Well, folks, thank you for listening to this week's episode of Life is a Story We Tell Ourselves. Toby Black certainly opened us to many opportunities and tools to help us find spirit, purpose, and meaning in our lives. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast at lifeisastorypodcast.com. Our next episode will explore the story of Angel Island, the Ellis Island of the West. You won't want to miss the stories of hope and heartbreak as immigrants mostly from the Far East sought a new beginning in the United States. Stay safe, share happiness, and remember, never stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing.